Welcome to our review on paints and pigments. If we think about pigments first of all then, when we're referring to a pigment we're talking about a coloured substance. Now these can come from either natural or synthetic sources. So natural sources would be things like plants or animals and even powdered rocks and our synthetic sources would be the ones that are man-made in laboratories. If we think about paint then, one of the questions they do like to ask is why we actually paint things. So two options for you here. You can obviously talk about the fact that we paint things in order to protect them. Or you could say that we paint them to make them look more attractive, look nicer, look prettier. Any of those, as amazing as it sounds, will still get you a mark. Now, our paint is made up of three key ingredients that we need to remember the names and their functions for. We've got the solvent, which is used to thin the paint so it spreads more easily. Obviously it's going to be far easier to paint something that's a relatively thin liquid rather than just a solid lump. If you imagine trying to paint your walls of your house with basically a giant lump, it'd be like a giant crayon, so it's not going to be very easy to use. The pigment is the substance that gives the paint its colour, and the binding medium is what's actually going to stick the pigment to the surface being painted. In terms of paint drying, then what's actually going to happen is, as the paint dries, the solvent is evaporating. So we've got two types of paint that we can go and buy in the shops. You can get yourself an emulsion paint, which are the water-based ones, or an oil paint. Now, if we think about our emulsion paints first of all, then the water is the solvent. So as that water evaporates into the air, the paint is going to dry, and the other ingredients will be stuck together by that binding medium and held to the wall. The oil paint is slightly different because oil paint has the pigment dispersed in an oil which may also be dissolved in a solvent just to make it that little bit thinner. If we consider the oil paints in a little bit more detail, these are the ones that are going to be used generally to paint doors and window frames and it gives that tough shiny layer of paint. Now the solvent in our oil paints is a hydrocarbon oil and that's what's going to evaporate as the paint dries. However, at that same time we're seeing another reaction occurring in our oil paint, which is the oxidation of the hydrocarbon molecules. So the oxygen from the air is going to react with those hydrocarbon molecules and oxidise them, and that makes them join together. The final word we need to know the meaning of is the phrase colloid. Now when we're talking about a colloid, we're talking about a mixture where one substance is dispersed evenly in another substance. Now the key thing to remember here is that word dispersed. A colloid doesn't have anything that's dissolved, we must say it's dispersed. Now what we need to remember here is that when we're thinking about this substance that's being dispersed in another, it's tiny tiny little particles. So what we find is the colloid won't actually separate out into those individual components because those particles are so small that they won't actually settle to the bottom.